Hey guys, I watched a movie yesterday, Eaten Alive. This is my review of it. There are a lot of movies out there called Eaten Alive, so don't be confused by the many titles. This is from the 80s. It's directed by Umberto Lenzi, who's an Italian horror film director, also directed the film Cannibal Ferox, which I want to get to. I'm trying to get to all the classic grindhouse Italian horror films, especially those involving zombies um, and also cannibals. The 80s output of Italian cannibal movies is insane. There are so many. And a big part of me has this, uh, it's odd to say nostalgia, but there is a bit of history and memory with Cannibal Holocaust, the 1980 movie, mostly because I've known about it since I was a little kid. I've always loved messed up movies, but um, I would say some of my favorite messed up movies are like A Clockwork Orange. And then, I mean, like, that's probably my favorite. It's a movie I watched when I was so young. But then Cannibal Holocaust I saw, but it wasn't like something that I really engaged with. It wasn't something that I really thought was, you know, that fun. But um, over time, I started watching just lots of old movies. And it's one that, uh, it's just a memory I have. And, and I'm really a big fan of it. Um, but then there's Eaten Alive, which is another cannibal movie from the same year, and it is equally kind of crazy. Both films start in New York. This one actually starts right off the bat in Niagara Falls in Canada, like cold opening, Niagara Falls. I love movies that do cold openings, kind of like Sorcerer, the William Friedkin movie from the 70s, which opens with four different small acts, like four different five minute acts where we see people, um, how they end up in a situation in the middle of the jungle. And that kind of storytelling is just some of my favorite. It's been, I mean, it, it's just a really cool way to open a film, but this film does that before becoming kind of a, a snooze fest. I, I thought that the dialogue is very dumb. It's about a woman who's searching for her sister who goes missing in the jungle. She's been abducted by a cult leader named Jonas and she is basically just part of this cult now and the sister's trying to find her but she hires this guide to help her it doesn't have a famous cast like it doesn't have any stars like usually i'd be like oh claudio Casanelli's in this he's in a ton of italian movies or barbara bach um but there wasn't anyone of note in this it was really just kind of a a movie that clearly had a lower budget it had some cool cannibal scenes i'll give it that like, when you go into a cannibal movie, I feel like it's like when you go to see John Wick 4, you don't go in for, well, the story wasn't that deep. Like, no, you go in because you were expecting cannibal action. So with that, this movie, in my opinion, is about a 6 out of 10. It's very, very silly. Like, honestly, I want to even give it a 5 out of 10, but it really leans into that value of what it's doing. It's cannibal film crossed over with a cult film so it's gonna be a bit convoluted it was set right after the jonestown massacre and you know i'm someone who loves i mean i'm sure a lot of movie people are you watch a movie and you think of well you know there's a cool historical factor to this movie and i've always just loved thinking of that well you know oh this movie came out in the 1970s it was inspired by this or you know it like the dark knight was set post 9 11 so that's why it's this very clear-cut story of just a good guy fighting bad guys. Like, there's always meaning behind stuff. So, for this film, it's just, in my opinion, this movie from the 80s, and it might not have, like, some real depth behind it, but you're just going into it trying to watch a movie about cannibals just doing their thing in the jungle, and on top of that is this story that just is there to be the, the main anchor story. But really, I thought that it provides lots of messed up scenes and it has a very memorable soundtrack. All these Italian movies really have very memorable soundtracks. But the imagery is pretty memorable. It is a very slow film, like I'm not gonna lie. I, I was very much like, like it, it failed to really engage me. I thought there were points where they were trying to escape where it was like, oh, this is actually getting suspenseful. And then it would just go back to being like slow talking scenes. Oh, they're a cult, they're bad. but. You know, overall, there's a very nice novelty value to this film. So let me know what you think of Eaten Alive, the Umberto Lindsay film, if you've seen it. Thank you guys for watching.